The explosion of global networks is fundamentally changing the nature of business, government, and social institutions. Increasingly, global technical change is due to open global communication, amplifying and sharing local innovation. Hello, I'm John Gage from Sun Microsystems. Sun is a proud institutional partner of the 1999 World Economic Forum. This year in Davos, we're discussing managing the impact of globalization. For us, this means how do we apply global networking technology to shape local action in a city, in a town, in a village, in a school. Networking technology allows decentralized, distributed decision making. What we call global is increasingly the aggregation of local action. Rural villages and towns are buffeted by economic disparity, but networking technology provides new tools for participation in the global economy. As an example, one small town in the United States, Nevada, Missouri, threatened by economic decline, is using network technologies to build a new future. We were reeling from the loss of so many jobs when the state hospital closed, almost a thousand jobs, which was really crippling to our economy. Committed to preventing the town's demise, the locals sought advice. The state sent a consultant, Howard Jacks. The thought was that we would bring Nevada closer to Kansas City with the use of advanced telecommunications. And of course, by bringing it close to Kansas City, we also would bring it closer to the world. The consultants proposed the creation of an advanced telecommunication system, including a telecommunity, telecenter, and teleincubator. Parts of the abandoned state mental hospital would be used to house the project. The first time Alan Kenyon took me through that building, it had been abandoned and hadn't been used for, I think, years. And I said, I shook my head and said, this is where you're going to put the, uh, the telecenter, right? And he said, yeah. Well, four months later when I came back, I just couldn't believe the, the distance that they'd come. The telecenter began as an idea in late 1994, early 1995, and essentially we saw it as a way of using uh, technology to bring education, uh, job training, business opportunities to rural America. The internet connectivity in this building has 125 connections with the IP-based system that we have. Now the buzzword is bandwidth, and nearly everyone in Nevada knows what that means. The more we have, the faster we can interact. With full T1, it's very quick, it's very efficient, it looks almost like the television. The Tel Center provides a linkage between education and economic development. By providing the educational resources that people need throughout the state and in the rural areas, we have a reason for our children to stay home in their home areas, in their hometowns. The flood of automobiles threatens the world's great cities. But Curitiba, Brazil, is a promising example of a city designing itself to utilize new technologies in transportation. Designing systems which are adaptable has been a key to making Curitiba a model for the 21st century. In 1971, at the beginning, our system of public transportation was very simple. It was only buses running on exclusive lanes, and slowly it changed. Today, it's a very sophisticated system. Buses serving different functions in the network are separated by color. Different colored buses receive different priority along the system. Sensors embedded in the express lanes track all bus movement. At Curitiba's Traffic Control Center, the steady flow of information from the network of sensors allows operators to clear intersections by stopping car traffic while express buses speed to their destinations. Everything about the bus network is designed for efficiency. There is one fare with free transfers. Boarding time is reduced because riders wait on raised and closed platforms, allowing easy access into the bus. Multiple doors in the side of the bus allow quick entry and exits for passengers. 
tudo que se faz começa a ter cada vez mais Everything that we do each time has a follow up an improvement optimizing. Then as we progress in quality, we set some standards, then guarantee these standards. Now with computers and networks, we can advance to the next level. Networking allows transportation systems to interconnect, sharing information and optimizing performance. LA's challenge now is to design a transport network that makes the streets and freeways and the cars that use them more responsive to traffic pattern. Why not handle the roadway like we handle the computer networks so that when there's a problem you can reroute around the problem and the majority of the people never know there's an issue. Planners at the state of Maryland have designed an information network to prevent traffic jams before they happen. We created things called advanced traffic management systems that would try to put detectors out on the roads that would detect where the problems were. They would put cameras on the road so that we could see where there were issues. So that when there was an accident, we can number one, coordinate our response, but we could also reroute people for around the problem so they would never notice there was a problem there to begin with. The next step is to mitigate the traffic jams created by the design of the road system itself. One of the first technologies used was a technology that's been around for years, which is a loop detector. If you ever pull up in the intersection in the middle of the night and the light just turned red and it turns green to let you go, it's because there was a loop detector buried under the pavement and when your car stopped on top of it, it checked the other lanes and said, well, you know, I'll let you go and it lets you go through. Los Angeles has taken the loop detector one step further. Sensors embedded at intersections send real-time information on traffic flow to LA's automated traffic surveillance and control center. Traffic signals are regulated based on conditions as they happen. LA drivers now spend up to 40% less time sitting at red lights. In the future, it's hoped that that system can be integrated to help in public transit by giving priority to buses and shuttles, making the service more attractive compared to driving. Eventually, the network will anticipate when streets are likely to become overloaded and make decisions to adjust traffic flow. These neural networks with an adaptive capacity found in nature will help manage the world's most congested cities according to biological and ecological principles. Automobiles are becoming nodes on a nomadic network. The car of the 21st century will be to today's vehicles what the Model T was to the horse. Amory Lovins and his colleagues at the Rocky Mountain Institute call it the hypercar. The smaller, better, faster, cheaper kind of revolution that we see in electronics is now coming to cars, partly because we're going to make the cars a computer on wheels, not a car with chips. So being software dominated, they'll be very flexible, upgradable, customizable, and will do many intelligent things you didn't think a car could do. The hypercar will have an internal intelligence system monitoring and coordinating every aspect of its performance. Components of this system are already in production and more are being designed by leading automobile companies every day. And within the car, there's what amounts to a local area network in which all of the sensors and equipment communicate through continuously improved software to provide an expanding array of, of functions and features and behaviors that you want. This car practically drives itself. I'll try it. I'd love to. The car itself, of course, will have its address on the internet, uh, both for your own communications and for its communications with the factory to keep it all calibrated and keep upgrading your software and making sure nothing's going wrong. Through these links, the car will become a self-monitoring node on a wireless network. Networks of cars have successfully platooned in tests, demonstrating the safety and economy of systems which allow vehicles to automatically adapt to the presence of other cars on the road. Safety can be maintained even along high-density routes. Once you have the sensors and software that are built into the car anyway for other reasons, it becomes much easier to integrate it with more intelligent transportation systems at any scale, whether it's sensing traffic flow and avoiding collisions with things in front of you or coming in from the side, or giving you information about what roads uh, to use, what, what the conditions are up ahead. 
Global networking allows information from sensors, from satellites, to help local institutions manage fires, floods, agricultural production, environmental change. Nowhere is this more important than the Amazon rainforests. Here at the Brazilian Space Agency, INPE, technologists and software designers interpret information beamed back to Earth from the satellite's cameras and radio sensors. That information is then distributed by computer networking to environmental agencies all over Brazil. Scientists use the data to measure the health of the most remote and impenetrable ecosystem in the world, the Amazon. Only 8% of the Amazon is still virgin rainforest. The Amazon, often referred to as the lungs of the world, is slowly dying. Sometimes you go in a river and there's a forest uh, besides this river. But behind that forest, there is deforestation and you don't see it in the ground. But when you go to a satellite image and look at the same place, then you can miss things that you, you would miss in the ground. Satellites monitor weather patterns and human land use. Geographic information software maps out changes in the forest ecosystem. Here, satellite photos show what is called the fishbone effect. This documents deforestation along roads, roads built to economic development in the rainforest. These satellite images are now vital, hour by hour. They track dangers such as El Nino caused wildfires rampaging deep in the heart of the rainforest. There is about uh, 300,000 fires by year in Brazil. But with the satellite imagery, we are able every day to detect each point of fires and uh, locate these fires in maps so you can act very fast. The information is passed on to organizations like Embrapa, the Brazilian Agricultural Department. Environmental organizations and law enforcement agencies share the data through computer networking. You don't need today in Brazil to see a smoke to detect a fire. You can do this with satellite imagery. Analyzing the satellite images helps Embrapa determine what food crops can be grown in harmony with the rainforest. We have a social demand in Brazil about environmental question, about the, the links between poverty and environmental problems, about uh, agricultural development, and the, the technology is a tool that we have to give new response for these challenges. Sun pioneers distributed open technologies to allow anyone to use the power of the global network. Our only limitation is our imagination.